Good morning, Holy Spirit. So on the prophetic anointing, this year, you are going to see a lot of vulgar language, a lot of abuse, a lot of mistrust, a lot of attack on anybody who has the prophetic anointing. The miracles he did, the whole thing is stage managed and faked. It's faked. You are, you are here. You are here. I supervise everything for years. I know everything that happens. Come out if you're suffering from cancer of any part of the body. Body poison. Of it's any part a of the body. complicated system. We have the emergency section. Here is the emergency section of the synagogue church of our nation. They are being trained by medical doctors. Any cancerous situation, they send them away. Then people that had ordinary wounds that can heal will bring them in to present as cancer. By his wounds, she is healed. Those people are being fed medication. They give them drugs to get you know, speedy recovery. What you just see is the before and the finality. I know because I was synagogue chief video editor. You think that that thing just happened the same day. Some of them took span of one year, six months. <laughs> You cannot trust in God without your medicine. People stop taking their medication. They stop taking their pills. I want to throw this away. So wait to that bed. You are dying in their droves. So many of them. I know people died because they didn't take their medicine. And it's difficult to live with that. Some people will ask, you know all this. Why were you still there? It's difficult to explain. TB Joshua told me, don't worry. We use this thing to build people's faith in Christ. I wasn't having in mind that I was actually doing something wrong. I thought I was doing something that will help to build the faith of people in the church. This miracle has gone a long way to build your faith. Yeah. We saw the agony that he was going through. I think everybody that came from that place has guilt. What's so desperately painful and sad is we thought we were doing the right thing. It's difficult for me to put my hands on the number of people that lost their lives. He has a lot of blood in his hands. The death of people doesn't mean anything to him. ministry that is prophetic in nature, it's God who has appointed it, who has anointed it, will always be brought down. Look at the screen of your television right now. Somebody who is housemate impregnated this guy. Oh, the boy that was helping me, he raped him. Then I reported Forget about story. rape. Nobody raped her. Okay, she's a tempter. That spirit of tempting is a rape. You hear her say she's flesh. So let's cast the spirit out of her. Okay. He was a sexual predator. He was a ritualist. It's I saw that. Otherwise, there's going to be too much attack on that prophetic. This man preach every Sunday. Topics about love and about mercy. They felt very strange coming from his lips. I stared myself in the mirror a lot of the times and 
Maybe I do look like him, maybe. For as long as I can remember, I have been raised as TB Joshua's daughter. I knew the child, Ajoke, right from birth. She's his actual daughter, his biological daughter, with another woman outside of wedlock. He, he didn't seem to like her very much. She was like kind of labeled the black sheep of the family. I was in primary school. I was made to move to the disciples room. I didn't volunteer to be a disciple. I was made to join. Ajoke grew inside the synagogue like an outcast. I think he wanted to keep her a secret. I don't think he wanted anyone to know who she was. The message about Ajoke was that she had terrible evil spirits that needed to be driven out. There was a time in the disciples' meetings, he said that people could beat her. Anyone in the female dormitory could just hit her. And I saw people just walking in, just slapping her as they walked past. Ajoke, little thing, you see someone you slap her. There was a particular time that I was very tired. I had slept a little bit too much. So he started like shouting at her to get up, to get up, to get up. And there was another um, like disciple there who basically took her and took her to the shower and whipped her with an electrical cord and then turned the hot water on. Put my head right on the hot water. I was screaming at the top of my voice and I just let the water run on my head for a very long time. We're talking about years and years of abuse, consistent abuse, abuse that wasn't ending. He hated her and he punished her for being born. Her existence was probably the biggest threat to his reputation. I couldn't even have an identity. That kind of pain cannot be put into words. I feel like, you know, maybe I really don't deserve to be alive. What's her fault? What has that girl done? It pains me. She was still very young that time. Can you imagine how, how heartless we were? <laughs>